Hello, uh, good afternoon or morning or evening as the case may be, and thank you for joining our inaugural webinar. Uh, my name's Terry Whitmore and I'm the Managing Director here at Henneker. And I just wanted to give the briefest of introductions before handing over to Oliver Holmes, who will be presenting today. Um, Henneker was found, formed 15 years ago, and we're based in the UK, midway between the cities of Manchester and Liverpool, if you uh, know the geography. And we have a worldwide network of distribution partners. Um, Henneker designs and develops equipment and processes that use plasma technology to solve various manufacturing problems. A typical example being poor adhesion. Uh, this first webinar, therefore, will focus specifically on that topic. Um, there will be time at the end for questions, and so if you could ask, uh, if I could ask you to type these into the questions area, uh, we'll aim to get through as many as possible at the end of the presentation. Um, any remaining questions, we'll uh, we'll send uh, direct emails in response to. Um, the webinar has been recorded and it will be made available online shortly afterwards. Um, I hope you find it useful and informative and I'll uh, now hand over to Oliver. Hi everyone watching, um, I'm Oliver Holmes, Application Specialist at Henneker Plasma. Uh, today we're going to talk about how you can achieve perfect adhesion with plasma treatment. So by the end of this webinar, hopefully you'll come away with an insight into plasma technology for uh, the reason of improving adhesion and that should cover quite a few things and that will be the common problems um, that cause poor adhesion, uh, why, how plasma treatment is going to solve those problems, um, how we test for successful treatment and how fast plasma treatment can be and we'll also go a little bit into the limitations of plasma activation and go through some of the common myths and uh, debug the different uh, problems that can happen. So first of all, what causes poor adhesion? There's mainly two different things that will cause poor adhesion in all manufacturing um, settings. And these largely fall into two camps. Um, surface contamination is by far the biggest problem. And this uh, surface, surface contamination can come from a variety of sources, whether that be a mold release agent for an injection molded part, um, the cooling fluid from a CNC um, machine, or from uh, fingerprints, simply like fingerprints and grease from manual handling of parts from one part of the factory to the other. Uh, the second common issue is that people are using uh, inherently low surface energy materials. So that would be things such as polypropylene, PTFE, um, Peak is a very popular one in the high-end um, manufacturing world and all of these materials they have an inherently low surface energy and we'll go on to a little bit about what that is and what that means. Now the question being how does plasma treatment address these two issues and it works in two ways and both of these uh, mechanisms happen at the same time so you don't really need to worry about how it works as much but we'll go into a little bit of detail now. So the first thing is plasma treatment will clean your part. Um, plasma is very active, it's very excited and reactive, and it will interact with the contamination on a part and break it down, chew it up into small pieces. Those small pieces become gaseous and get pumped out of the system um, by a vacuum pump or blown away in, in the case of an atmospheric plasma. Uh, getting rid of all that contamination means that you know, your adhesive can actually stick to the part instead of stick, sticking to the dirt. And a common analogy that we say is, if you try and paint a dusty wall, you know, the paint's gonna flake off straight away. And that's sort of what plasma cleaning is doing. It's getting rid of that dust before you do the paint. Um, the second way that plasma treatment can help is it can activate the surface of a part. Uh, so plasma activation involves the use of oxygen as gas typically. And when you have oxygen in a plasma, it will be broken apart and it will allow it to react with the surface of your parts. The interaction with the surface is permanent and it will allow um, a set the surface energy to raise a lot and that will give it more of a chance of interacting with the adhesive and increasing the adhes adhesion strength. The major barrier to using plasma um, is, is twofold. If your part is already too heavily soiled, so for instance, if there's really thick, heavy grease on there, we normally suggest um, doing a pre-wash before doing plasma treatment 
and that will give you perfect results every single time. In terms of plasma activation, uh, you it, it works for every material. However, certain materials it will work better for than others. So, for instance, uh, carbon composites, peak PTFE, polypropylene, polyethylene, all great materials. Um, if you activate these materials, typically you will see the activation last for many days. And so that gives you a lot of flexibility with processing. So if you want to plasma treat a whole batch of parts, and then maybe it's an hour or two before you paint or process them, um, that's absolutely fine. But if you go to soft, flexible materials, maybe like a silicone rubber, um, in those cases where the material is very soft and flexible, the plasma activation tends to only last in the order of minutes. And so you may, might only have five or 10 minutes to plasma activate your part and then do the further processing, whether that be printing, gluing, bonding, encapsulating, over molding. So in, in a sense, um, the plasma activation and the whole process need to be married together. And in general, Henneke would say, if you plasma treat a part, you should process it to the next stage as quickly as possible if that is feasible for your manufacturing uh, line or your system. The, um, the other issue is that um, sometimes when you have contamination on the surface, uh, you can chew that up a lot, but it won't really get removed. And so if you've got too thick of a um, contamination on there, um, it, it can be quite difficult to remove. And in those cases, ultrasonic cleaning, solvent cleaning, they're a great companion to tr plasma treatment, but they will never achieve the levels of cleanliness that plasma treatment can. So just to demonstrate um, what I mean by surface energy and what I mean by adhesion, um, adhesion is very difficult to see um, and plasma treatment is very difficult to see. But what we have instead are surface energy testings. So this is a surface energy testing um, made by Henneke. Um, this has a very specific surface tension and the way that surface, tension, uh, surface energy testings work, if the surface tension of the liquid is lower than the surface energy of the uh, part, it will spread out. But if it was the other way around, it will bead up. So to give you an example, this is a 38 um, testing. So this has a surface tension of 38. It has an integrated brush in the bottle. If I bring that up um, to here, you can see when I wipe it across, it beads up onto the surface. So that isn't what you want. And if you were to take this piece of plastic and you were to paint on it or print on it or glue it, um, the results just wouldn't be very good. The paint would flake away, the glue would come apart, and the, the text would fade over time. So that's not ideal. So what we do instead, we take a fresh piece, exactly the same material. We open our plasma tool. This is a HPT 100. Um, it's a benchtop plasma tool, the smallest we sell. It's great for R&D activities and small batch production. Uh, we open the door, we take the sample tray out. Normally we'd handle this with gloves, but for this demonstration, it should be okay. And we place uh, a couple of samples onto the tray. So you can load the chamber up as much as you can fit in. Uh, we sell chambers of all different sizes. And then we put that back into the chamber and close it over and press go. So these systems are extremely easy to use. They operate in a similar way to a microwave oven. The user just needs to set time, power, and the flow rate of the process gas, which in this case is air. The system will take care of everything else. So it will be automatically evacuating the chamber. It will automatically um, stabilize the base pressure, input the process gas, and strike the plasma. And then once it's been done for, this, for a specific time, it will vent it back to the atmosphere for you to use. So that's pumping down now to vacuum. It'll take about 60 seconds. Um, what we can do is we can take this camera, the close-up camera, and point it at the chamber. So when the plasma comes on, plasma is typically very highly colored. It generates a lot of light, and this is because it's very energetic, and the electrons are moving around very fast, and that emits a certain color of light, depending on what gas we're using. 
So for instance, oxygen is a sort of whitish color. Uh, nitrogen and argon are very purple and hydrogen is a little bit reddish. It's quite dim compared to a lot of the other gases. And so that's quite a nice thing because you can diagnose a lot of issues with the plasma system just by looking at the plasma um, and the distribution of the plasma, um, the color of the plasma and the intensity of the, of, of the light given off as well. The, um, the other thing we can do is once this is finished, which should be in around about um, one or so, one or two minutes, we can then use different energy testings. So we have a 48, a 52, 56, 64, and 72. And instead of doing a complex measurement uh, through goniometry or some other um, expensive and time consuming kit, if we wipe all of these testings over the surface, we'll be able to see um, we'll be able to see the rough surface energy that we uh, that we are at without having to measure it specifically. And that works really well for um, you know QC on the line. Instead of having to take it over to an R and D lab or a quality control lab, you can simply use these right on the line where the parts are being made, and you'll be able to tell whether or not the process is working as expected. Whilst that's going to finish up, I also want to point out this system. So this is our atmospheric plasma system. We have two types of plasma system, vacuum and atmospheric. The atmospheric plasma systems, instead of using a vacuum chamber, um, generate the plasma in air without you having to put it in any type of chamber. Essentially, this nozzle um, has a high voltage running through it and some compressed gas. And out of the end of this nozzle, a small plasma flame is ignited. And that gives you a localized fast treatment that you can integrate into a production line or onto a three or six axis robot. And that gives you a, a very fast targeted way of treating really large parts, complex parts. Um, and you know, if you want to really treat a lot of parts, you know, this is probably the way to go. Um, but for, 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 uh, for the reasons of demonstration, it's a lot harder to demonstrate that system than it is this system. So as you can see, um, this is the plasma struck now. It's nice and purple as expected for air. Um, that should be running for another 30 seconds on the clock. The LCD screen will tell you exactly what step it's at and exactly how long is left. Um, yeah, and so while we're waiting for that to finish, um, I'll just look and see if we've got any questions rolling in. So just a reminder, if you do want to ask any questions um, at the end of the uh, webinar, please just throw those in the question uh, section on GoToWebinar and uh, we'll be, I'll be able to read those at the end and we'll go through them. Um, and if there's anything that you want to pick up after this, please just send us an email and we can clarify or uh, answer any questions you have. So the plasma is finished, as you can see. Uh, I'll move that camera back so we can see the testings. The system will automatically vent back to atmosphere. Um, as, again, as I say, it's very simple to use. It needs very little training for any operators who are using it. We open it up. Um, the system's cold, so it, it, it barely gets above, I'd say, 30, 40 degrees at worst. Um, that's if you're running it for hours. Um, and here we have our samples. As you can see, the visually not changed at all. You can't see a difference. There's no color. There's no dimensional change. Um, yeah, so I'll put this camera down here. And so what we'll do is we'll take the same ink, the 38 testing, and this was the one that beaded up prior. And we'll rub across the surface. And as you can see, the ink is spreading across the surface without any um, beading up of the ink. So that shows that the surface energy is above 38 at this point. And so what an operator would do is you would either pick the correct testing and just use that one testing, or you would have a range of testings and you would uh, use each one sequentially until you could see what the surface energy was. So let's go up a little bit to 56 instead. So that would be um, sort of a very good result if we could get to 56. Uh, the adhesion would be much improved compared to the previous result. So as you can see with 56, the ink spreads perfectly across, um, it, it spreads completely. And so that is another pass. So you, you typically want to treat these as a, a, a go, no go type of test. And we'll go all the way up to 72. So 72 is the same surface tension as water. 
So if it passes this one, even water-based inks um, should be possible to wet on these surfaces, and that'll give you good print adhesion if you're using water-based inks. Um, and yeah, there we go. It's um, a little bit hard to see. Maybe I'll get a bit more ink on the brush, um, but it, it's, it's spreading out, as you can see. So it's past 72 as well. So what we can conclude from that test is that just from one minute of air plasma in this small benchtop system, you are getting a surface energy change from below 38 all the way to above 72. And that is really powerful. It's only using a small amount of electricity and a small amount of uh, gas. And in this case, it's just air, so there's no real cost to it. And um, you're changing the surface energy a lot. And the other thing that we know about surface energy is that it's directly linked to adhesive strength. So if you're getting a high surface energy, you're going to get high adhesion strength, both in printing, bonding, gluing, encapsulating, over molding, the whole lot. So we'll put this back into the system. Close it up. So at this point, um, I would just like to talk a little bit more about the Cirrus systems. So obviously, we make systems, vacuum systems, uh, which are sort of batch-based systems that are all the way up to 150 liters and beyond. But in some cases, you don't want a batch type um, production. Instead, you want to do continuous processing. Uh, the Cirrus is perfect for that type of activity, whether it be fixed on a gantry above an extrusion line, or whether it be on a six-axis robot, as mentioned, for an automotive uh, casing, uh, gluing large parts together, uh, sealing with foam. We've worked with a lot of really interesting companies integrating these into automotive and aerospace applications, and you can find more about that on our website. And finally, the other thing I want to mention is uh, the variety of materials you can use this with, which is probably one of the biggest strengths of plasma treatment. Plasma is very, um, vacuum plasma is very cold. It barely gets above sort of uh, body temperature, and therefore it can be used with a lot of different materials, pretty much any plastic, any glass, ceramic, metal, you name it, we can plasma treat it, cleaner and activator. Um, in certain cases, such as with PTFE, different gases are needed. But for Henneke systems, we can handle almost any gas as long as it's not highly corrosive. So hopefully that's given you a good overview of plasma treatment for adhesion. Um, I'd just like to uh, say thanks for you know, attending, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, um, I, I don't see any at the moment in the chat. Uh, we did get some email to us prior to the webinar. Um, so I'll just go through and answer those. Um, obviously, priority to the live viewers there. Um, so question from one of our customers, uh, are there any types of materials that cannot be treated? So in general, uh, any solid surface can be treated. Uh, in it, it really depends on the application of what you're trying to do. And as mentioned before, certain materials will be um, more suitable to plasma than others, depending on the, type, the process times that you've got to work with. If you need to process a soft silicon rubber and then wait five days to do the next process, um, that's not going to be great. But if you can uh, use carbon composites, polypropylenes, or if you can process very fast, um, then plasma is perfect for the application. Um, Okay, next question. Is the plasma hot, i.e. can temperature sensitive materials be treated? Uh, so I think we've already talked about this a little bit. Um, even with very low TG, low melting point materials, such as um, polycaprolactone or PVA films, cellulose films, um, we can plasma treat pretty much any plastic. Um, the, as long as it's solid at room temperature, uh, we can plasma treat it. That's the general rule of thumb. And finally, uh, what are the common types of gas used? So in general, a lot of people can probably use something like air or oxygen. Uh, they work very good for the 90%, 95% of materials. Um, in certain applications, especially ultra clean, um, applications uh, in aerospace or semiconductors, 
um, you want to use a little bit of argon and that just gives it a little bit more um, energy to uh, clean and treat the um, surface. And normally you'd use oxygen in a mixture with um, argon and that'll give it a good sort of uh, combination action. Uh, to PTFE, um, it always requires hydrogen. Um, it doesn't work with oxygen or air or nitrogen or argon. Um, it must be hydrogen, and we have very good processes for doing that. Um, if you want to learn more about that, please get in touch. Um, but apart from that, they're the general um, gases. So air, oxygen, argon, and hydrogen are the four main gases that you will ever need to use. Okay. So... If you... Um, yeah, yeah, so uh, Gillian's just going to give me... Um, the questions. What's the working of polystyrene plates? Radiation sterilization at the plasma treatment. Is it possible to keep wettability for five years? So on polystyrene plates. So if the grade of polystyrene has a high enough um, glass transition temperature, then it's likely that the plasma activation, especially using oxygen, will last a long time. In, in terms of specifics of five years, I believe that is possible that you will see a, an increase in the surface energy um, even after five years compared to not plasma treated, but it won't be as high as immediately plasma treated. Um, now, in the sort of microplate um, application or the bio biology application, polystyrene is used quite a lot and plasma treating polystyrene is very popular um, for increasing the surface energy. The key rule of thumb for plasma activation is that even though it's ideal to do plasma activation and then immediately go to the next process, you will always gain some amount of surface energy, even after a thousand years. It will still be higher um, than if you'd never done plasma treatment to begin with, because that oxygen is now mixed into that uh, plastic and it will always give it a slight polarity at the surface. Um, yeah. In the system. Yeah. Theory. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our Nimbus system. So in our, in our atmospheric systems, we have an, uh, a cirrus system, which is our single nozzle system, and we have the Nimbus system, which is essentially the same system but with two nozzles instead of one. The benefit there is it's very cost effective to buy um, a two nozzle system compared to a single nozzle system if you're using a lot of nozzles. Um, essentially, the box looks identical, um, and all that comes out of the back is an additional umbilical cord leading to an additional nozzle. Um, the operation of the system is identical with the same D sub connector on the back for integrating with online PLC control or anything like that. Um, so it, it, it's very similar. Um, can plasma treatment be used also for PDDF or nitrocellulose membranes? Yes. So um, in nitrocellulose, I'll talk about that one first. Um, it's very popular, especially in sensing and lots of other uh, interesting applications. Um, nitrocellulose it has nitro groups in the actual cellulose structure. Um, what oxygen treatment will do is it will probably not increase the amount of nitro groups, but it will increase the amount of oxygen containing groups. So carbonyls, carboxylic acids, alcohols, and in general, it will make the material more polar um, and more interactive with the materials. In terms of PVDF, it's very similar to PTFE. All you need to do is use hydrogen gas and treat it for an extended period typically around about 15 to 30 minutes, and you will get a permanent increase in the surface energy at that surface. Um, so it's very good for PDV PVDF, and it's almost the only way to do it. Um, the other option being sodium etching, but sodium etching is a, a very um, difficult process to set up and to operate. Implementation of our machine, but uh, I'm not sure. Spectacular implementations. But there's a very good video on our website um, with a company called Robofoam, and Robofoam make foam sealing gaskets for um, automated foam sealing machines so that you can seal um, environmental chambers and, and environmental cases for automotive applications. So say if you want an electronic box to be encased in a plastic box, 
um, Robofoam have done a really good job integrating up one of our Cirrus systems onto a massive six-axis robot, and they treat large, um, large area of automotive pieces with our Cirrus. And I think recently they released a video on their LinkedIn, so you know, feel free to go over and give them a like. Um, yeah, it, I think that was a very spectacular video they showed uh, very recently on their website. Cool. So um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact us at plasmatreatments.co.uk. Um, we can answer your questions and help you find a solution that's right for your application. Uh, and in the future, we're looking at doing more web webinars. Uh, I think the next one might be on coatings, but we're, you know, we'll send out more details close to the time. Um, Plasma can do a lot of different things, and we hope that we can help you solve some of your problems with Plasma. Thanks.